Here we go! All right, all of our gear has been transferred to my vehicle. We're leaving David's truck here as our pickup vehicle when we exit the river here tomorrow afternoon. Now we're getting ready to head back to Mount Vernon to begin this trip on the beautiful Cocosine River. This is uh, number nine on the, the, the water trail maps, if you're wondering where we're parked at. The actual location for the put-in takeout at number nine on the maps is about a quarter mile back to this road, but it's a, well, this dirt muddy path. It's just a complete mess, rutted, full of water, and we were afraid of getting stuck back there. So that's why we're up here closer to the uh, Route 7, I think it's 715. All right, we're here at the put-in, ready to begin our journey on the Cocosine River. I have David Ty with me today, Hollywood. I think we have about 28 miles ahead of us. The water levels are currently at 200 CFS, which is perfect. Below 100, you start to drag quite a bit. Above 300, can get a little sketchy. Just last week, it was over 1,000 from all those heavy rains we had, but it receded quickly, back down to 200 CFS. It's gonna be a beautiful, clear blue sky day on the Cocosine River. Thanks for coming along. Here we go! Officially paddling down the Cocosine, and it feels wonderful. So for this trip, we put in at Riverside Park, all kind of on the north east corner of Mount Vernon, Ohio. It's approximately 28 miles down river through Mount Vernon, out through the countryside to where we left our truck this morning, a couple hours, about an hour ago, at uh, the county road uh, 423 or 432, put in takeout which is number nine on the uh, river trail maps. So that is what we have planned for this trip and we're gonna make it a one-nighter. So at about the halfway point, we have an island that we're hoping to set up our camp at tonight. So we'll see how that all shakes out. If we get there too early, we may keep on going a little further. Mm. I hit the spot. That's better than stopping to take time to cook right now. And snacking doesn't sound very good. Subway was the right choice. Woo! Well, we're finally leaving the Mount Vernon area. I'm ready to get away from all the city noise and get out in the country and see some beautiful scenery. We've got some nice rolling hills coming up. 
we got some nice little rapids right here. These are always fun. They get you moving a little quicker. Oh, it's a low head dam. All right. I can tell the difference already getting out of the city. It's already looking more rural. Perfect day to be on the water. Uh, correction on the river flow rate that I mentioned in the beginning, it's not 200, it's 239. So just a little above 200. Perfect water levels for a paddle. I feel like I'm laying on a Florida beach right now. It is nice. Get some sun on this pasty white winter skin. What is this? I can't escape reclamation water every river I go to. Not as bad as the Little Miami or the Scioto though. We are just about four miles in and still hear lawn mowers and some uh, noise from the city, but we're definitely getting closer to the countryside here. Today is May 9, if you were wondering. Lots of green out there. Spring is in full bloom now. And springtime is the perfect time to float the Kokosi because oftentimes during the summer and fall, the water levels will drop below 100 CFS. And you're going to be getting out and dragging on any of those low spots where there's uh, like those little rapids or riffles. It'd be too shallow to get through. So from what I've seen so far in these first four miles, I would highly recommend going when the water levels are over 200 CFS. Personally, I think I would enjoy it at three or 400. I know the livery said it can get a little sketchy about 300 and they don't recommend doing it when it's over that, but I like high fast water. It's kind of fun and exciting as long as you're careful and uh, have the right gear with you and wearing your PFD. Especially if you know the river. You know, I don't think it'd be too dangerous doing it at three or 400 if you know the river. Nice set of stairs heading up to a cabin up there. I can't see the cabin really well, but from what I can see, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna hit those logs. All right, no problem. That scared me for a moment. I saw a big rock I was heading into, and luckily I turned just at the right time and didn't hit it. Not sure what kind of duck that is. Ah, I'm gonna scream. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, I'm going it. Water's pretty clear today. I bet it was very murky a few days ago. I'd live there. Layman Road access right here under this bridge. And you said Kenyon College is right here? Yeah, right up here to the left of the hill is Kenyon College. Not really any good camping options yet. We're exactly 10 miles in right now from the beginning at River Side Park in Mount Vernon. We did see one spot that was pretty that looked pretty nice for uh, stealth camping, but again, there was private property nearby and a bike path nearby, so it, it wasn't ideal. But it could have worked in a pinch. We're finally getting away from civilization a little bit. Haven't heard any noise for a while other than the water and the birds. 
mile 11. Crossing under Zion Road. I think it's a County Road 33. County Road 230, 13.6 miles in. We'll be at our island in a half mile, at mile 14.2. I do believe this is our island up ahead here. We are at mile 14.6, so a little further than we thought. Now we just need to figure out where the takeout is. I'm assuming it's up here past this little gravel bar. Well, right offhand, I am not seeing anything. It looks like it might be a little path here. Let's get out and investigate. All right, let's go see if there's a campsite up here somewhere. Well, I'm not really seeing anything conducive to camping up here. I'm not gonna sleep on all these weeds. This is a mess right here. I mean, we could sleep out there on a the sandbar, but I've seen better places than that many times already. So maybe we're gonna go on down river. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do. Um, we'll check this out a little bit more. And I have a feeling we're gonna end up going down river a couple more miles, find a better looking sandbar. Yeah, this isn't that great. But it feels good to get out of the kayak and uh, stretch the legs a little bit after sitting down for almost four hours. I saw a deer up here when I was pulling up. So obviously deer cross this uh, little waterway and then come onto the island. You know, if it wasn't so weedy, it wouldn't be that bad. Maybe in the fall it's better, but this time of year, you know, everything's so green and lush and the weeds are really taking off. Not a bad view, that's for sure. And that's just a muddy mess down there. Well, we did not like what we saw here, so we're shoving off, heading on down river. I think there's a couple more islands in about a mile or two, so that's the plan. But camp is not going to happen here. Let's roll. We're not going to roll. We're going to paddle. All right, we just shoved off from that location, the island, and moving on down river. See what we can find. At least it's not desperation time yet. It's fairly early. 4.30. Hopefully we can find something in the next hour. 15 miles in. On the search for a campsite. But look at this. This is pretty cool. Definitely don't see something like this every day. I bet that's really pretty when the water's really flowing off that hillside. So here's something I've never really understood. If this is considered a scenic water trail, national or state, whatever it is, I forget. Why would they not have designated camping spots along the river, like every couple miles? You know, I mean, I know it's only 28 miles long, but why not make at least two or three places along through here, other than just the livery that has a campground? I mean, it just makes no sense. Now, that's what causes people to want to camp illegally because there's no other options and people want to camp, kayak camp when they're out on the water. Yeah, it's just always baffled me. It'd just be nice if there was some designated camping options that we knew of coming up up ahead. Now we're on the lookout for anything that'll work because there's not really any camp camping options on this river other than that, uh, that a Kokosine kayak and canoe livery, whatever it's called. We may have just found something that will work. A really nice gravel sandbar right here. <laughs> David about went sideways. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is perfect. A lot of times these gravel sandbars aren't flat and this one is level. Look at it. This is a beauty. I think we may have just found home for the night. This is pretty nice. And it's not big stone and rocks. You know, we got some sand here. 
which makes it soft and comfortable to sleep on. And it's flat. That's what's incredible about the sandbar. David was wanting a spot for his hammock. That's the only problem with this location. Look at all that driftwood over there. If we camped on that side, you could probably find a place to hang your hammock and we'd have unlimited firewood. Yeah. So you're gonna have to uh, wade across the river, get our firewood and bring it back to um, <laughs> start the fire. Nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Load up the canoe and shuttle it back. All right, we're gonna consider our options here and we'll let you know what's going on. I can't believe it, but we have decided to keep on going down river. Even though this is the perfect sandbar to camp on for tents, there's no tree cover, there's no firewood. Now, right down here, just around this turn, we're going to be right back beside the bike path. I think there's another island or two coming up, so there is still potential campsites down river. This one's hard to beat, but like I said, no firewood and no way to get out of this exposure, this full exposure of the sun. So we're gonna take our chances and head on back down river a little further and see what we can find. Well, right here around the turn, it looks like we may have another one right here at the bike path. Maybe this one will work. There's David up there investigating. Whoa, this looks nice. All right, I guess we better go check this one out too. I mean, you definitely couldn't sleep on these massive rocks. It's really sloped. <sighs> kind of rolling up in here. I mean, I could set up right here pretty easy and David could probably find a place to hang his hammock back in there. So the running track, the running and biking track is right there. But that's all right. I mean, over here on this side of the river, we should be fine. What do you think, David? Oh, yeah. I have seen two, two or three spots. I can sit up there, right there. And what I like about this is we got great sweeping views, great places to fly the drone. I love this curve in the river right here. Yeah. All right. I think we just found home. There's a little part of me that wants to keep going down river to see if there's something better around the next turn, but we know how that goes. It usually doesn't turn out good. What's this stuff called again? Pyro putty. Pyro putty. All right, we're gonna give this pyro putty a try. Enjoying a little pre-dinner coffee here this evening right here on the beautiful Cocosine River. Don't really need a fire right now because it's pretty warm, but it is going to be nice to have a fire tonight to cook our dinner over. We couldn't ask for a better day to be on the water in May, that's for sure. David just got his hammock all set up. This is the Dream Hammock Sparrow double layer with the hammock gear under quilt. 30 degree, 50 degree. 20, oh. 20 economy. 20 degree economy, hammock gear under quilt. And I am testing out a new piece of gear tonight. It's my Mountain Laurel Designs Bug Bivy 2, weighing in at a whopping seven ounces. So between that and my hammock gear Dyneema tarp, I am still lighter than my Z-Pax Duplex which I did bring, by the way, just in case I have issues with this bug bivy. I haven't even taken it out of the package yet. So tonight's gonna be like a little trial run using it, getting ready for my Allegheny 100 challenge on June 9th. Now to go along with that ultralight bug bivy is my new Mountain Laurel Designs um, uh, Apex 50 quilt. I can't remember the name of it, but it's, it has Apex, so it's the synthetic fill and it weighs in at 12 ounces. But it's only comfortable down to about 45 to 55 degrees. I didn't want to risk it tonight because we are going to get dip down to about 48, 49 degrees tonight. Probably would have been all right, but I definitely will be testing out that 50 degree quilt before June 9th comes. I'm sure that's going to be plenty warm for a, a summertime overnight trip on the Allegheny Trail, or the Allegheny National Forest on the, on the North Country Trail. And I failed to mention, I will be carrying all this new gear with my new backpack. 
I got two new backpacks last week from Nashville Packs. The small one is like 17 liters. Very small, very light. It's smaller than the Joey, Palante Joey. It's called the Tiempo. That's what I'll be doing the Allegheny 100 Challenge with. And then I did get their larger pack, uh, the Cutaway. I think it's 30 liters. Um, still a lot smaller and a little bit lighter, I think, than my uh, Light AF Curve 35. So that's going to be my new backpack of choice for 2023. Can't wait to try them out. Enjoying some jalapeno and cheddar venison sticks, courtesy of Dave. Him and his family got six deer last deer season, so delicious pre-dinner snack here. A little spicy, just what I like. Nothing like a good sandbar fire along the river. I love just piling it up with some good old driftwood. All right, this is the Bug Bivy 2 from Mountain Laurel Designs. First time it's come out of the package. And we have a sand all over it already. It's a sandy spot, but it's nice and soft and I can get it level. So we're gonna try it right here. Get all the lumps out. Make sure there's no sticks down there. All right, I finally got her set up. It took me a little while to figure it out with the uh, shot cord that they give you. It's a really thin, chintzy shot cord, but you know, that keeps it light. I don't know what to do with these mitten hooks. I'm gonna figure out a better system, but right for right now, I just got it wrapped around the, my trekking poles, and I kind of figured out, actually David figured out, that if I angled my pole this way and pulled directly from the peak a little bit better, it made the section above my head a little more taut. Now back here, no matter what I do, I can't get rid of this slack right there. But I saw that in a couple other videos. That's just the way it is. And so you have room to push out with your foot box and not put stress on the side of the bivy. But yeah, that's it. I got my uh, UGQ Bandit in there on top of my uh, X-Lite pad in the Nemo Philo. Top entry. It's tight quarters, but it's lightweight and it'll keep the bugs off. That's what's important to me. Burgers are looking good. I'm getting hungry. These are cooking up nicely. Top. Try not to burn them. Try not to flip them off of the pan into the coals. <laughs> we got onions for the burger. We got some buns ketchup mustard but you will not believe what i forgot mr tomato grower forgot to bring tomatoes for our burgers tonight so we're having onion burgers tonight what well, seems to be the problem david is the old sawyer letting you down it is look at that drip 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 that's as slow as russell's outdoors sawyer mini that's pathetic time to move on to the platypus quick draw are you up for an onion burger yo you bet without tomato yeah no Only lettuce. we knew a tomato guy. <laughs> All right, some onion. Probably little container of ketchup because my ketchup in the cooler for kayaking was bad. It didn't smell right, so I got some fresh ketchup up from the house, out of the fridge. Now we just need a burger in between this. Let's see how this onion burger tastes. Mmm. Really good. Some tomato on there would have been perfect. We're gonna cook up some cheesy bacon, Idaho, and potatoes next. I'll probably make another one just without the bun. Just have a chop up the onion over the top of it. All right, round two is served. We got a uh, cheesy bacon Idaho and potatoes and burger number two without a bun, ketchup, mustard, and onions on top.
Well, it's been a very peaceful evening, sitting around a campfire and enjoying the sounds of the river. It's just after nine o'clock, really enjoying these longer days of spring. Quarter after nine here on the Cocosine River Sandbar. Just about ready to call it a night. What is that? Lamb sausage. Oh, lamb sausage. That's gonna be so good. Eggs over medium on the fire. And lamb sausage. Oh man, it's got that slight burn char taste. That's good. This stuff is really good. It's not a real strong lamb flavor, but just enough. Mm -hmm. mm. Is it is it summer sausage? It has a slight summer sausage taste. Yeah, just that type of style. This stuff is amazing. Pretty thick too. Water actually feels a little warmer today since the air is so cold. Here we go. Day two on the Coco scene. And we're off to finish up these final eight miles of the Cocosine River here on day two. It's uh, just after 8 a.m. The sun is out in full force. It's gonna be another beautiful day. We'll probably be off the water before noon. Uh, the high today is like 74, 75 degrees, but when we get off the water, it's still gonna be in the upper 60s, but it's calm today. Feels great out here. Couldn't ask for better weather to finish up the Cocosine River. If it was any colder at all, I would have needed gloves today. It got down to 46 degrees last night. It was a little on the chilly side. I'm glad I brought my 20 degree quilt and not my 50. I probably would have been pretty cold. But I actually woke up with the chill this morning around five o'clock because of the heavy dew. It uh, came right through the screen top of my bug bivy and just soaked my uh, quilt. So the water was starting to come through and um, render the down almost half useless and keeping me warm. So yeah, it was a little chilly this morning and everything's put away wet. So I'm gonna have to get all my gear out when I get home and dry everything off. I should have put the tarp on last night. That was stupid. Being that close to the water, I should have known how heavy the dew was gonna be this morning. And I think David told me that it was gonna be dewy and I kind of blew it off. Should have had the tarp on. We have definitely enjoyed the second half of this river much more than the first half. First 10 miles was very noisy. A lot of commercial and residential area, but we definitely feel like we're more immersed in nature. 
All right, the road behind me there is Pipesville Road, and off to river right is a takeout for where the bike path ends. So from here on out, there is no more bike path along the Cocosine, and we're at approximately mile uh, 17.4, I believe, from the very beginning of the water trail at Riverside Park. Finally starting to warm up a little bit. Still feels cold when the sun's not on you, but out here in the full sun, it feels glorious. My toes are just a little on the cold side, but everything else is nice and warm now. So we are about a mile away from a section of the Cocosing that I've been waiting to see for a long time. Factory Rapids. As soon as we cross under, I think it's US Route 62 up here in a little bit, we should have less than a mile to Factory Rapids. But Factory Rapids is known for its uh, steep uh, sandstone walls, kind of uh, bluffs or ledges. I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, but looking forward to seeing it. We're definitely gonna film ourselves going through there. And I'm glad it's not gonna be sketchy today. It should be some smooth sailing through there. But as soon as we cross underneath uh, US Route 62 up ahead here in a little bit, it should be up next after that. Here's a good example of how high the water gets on this river. It was just up there last week at over 1,000 CFS. But you can see those logs up above that culvert, about six feet above the water. And it looks like they've been fighting erosion in this spot for quite some time. We got a nice little cabin here overlooking the water. That's pretty cool. Beautiful view. And the sound of the rapids right here. Not factory rapids, but uh, some nice little riffles coming up here. Alright, let's see if we can navigate our way through here without scraping the bottom. Looks pretty shallow on river left. Looks like David made it through unscathed on the right. We are currently passing the Cocosine Canoe and Camp. I believe they have a uh, livery here, a shuttle service. Approximately 18.7 miles in. Crossing under the Route 62 bridge. Well, looky here, folks. We didn't get skunked after all. Our first rope swing right there above David's head. That's a pretty nice one, man. That is up there like 45 feet. Whew, yeah, that would be a nice swing. Up there from that bank, I'm pretty sure you would land out there in the center of the river. But I have no interest in doing that on this cold day. I think we're getting close to Factory Rapids because I can hear a factory up ahead on river left. And I know those rapids are near that factory. The landscape's starting to look a little different. We're getting some of these uh, sandstone cliffs, walls, whatever you want to call them. More boulders in the river and slabs of stone. This is pretty cool right here. Definitely the first area like this we've seen. I do believe we have reached Factory Rapids. I can even see the drop in the river up ahead. I think we're going to pull off to the side somewhere and scout this because I just can't. I can't even see over the edge. It looks like a, you know, looking up ahead 200 yards, looks like the river's 10 feet lower than where we're at right now. You know, it might be nothing. Maybe we can just fly right down this, but I don't know because I can't see it. So let's pull over here river right and get out on one of these rocks and take a peek. Huh. I don't know which way to go. I don't, it doesn't look that bad. Probably just straight ahead. Let's take a gander at it first, just to be on the safe side. 
All right, after getting a little closer look at it, we didn't even get out. Uh, we realized it's not that bad. There goes David. Oh yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. <laughs> it looks like he hit a couple rocks there. Here we go. I hit a big one. <laughs> I really wanted to avoid that rock back there, but I didn't have time to maneuver around it. I thought I was going to get soaked, but it wasn't that bad. Did you hit that big rock right in the center? <laughs> I didn't even see it until it was too late. Yeah. Well, we're leaving Factory Rapids behind, right there. That was fun. And now we're entering the section where the river gets pinched down to, I don't know, 50 feet. I don't really notice the water going any faster here. That's pretty. Honey Run Waterfall Park. I wonder if there's a hiking trail to it or something. Let me know in the comments what this place is, guys. Looks like some pretty cool hiking trails right there. We just hit six miles for the day, so I'm guessing we're about halfway through our paddle on day two here. So a couple more hours and we'll be wrapping up the cocoa scene. Oh wow, there's a house up there on that bluff. Wow, what a view. This is by far the prettiest section of the river. Looks like we might have another campground here. I'm not sure, I see some campers up ahead and right here on river right, there's some teepees. Yes, those are definitely teepees. So I just looked on Google Maps and this is called Caves Campground. It's a really long, skinny stretch of camping area right on the river. I'm assuming it's a seasonal or permanent camping here. Rope swing number two. Very pathetic. Doesn't meet my standards one bit. Coming up on Route 715 up ahead here. The river kind of follows along the edge of the road. And I believe we're on our final three miles. Been lots of hills lately and lots of erosion on the banks where these sharp turns are at. Beautiful hills in the background. All right, we are on our final mile of the Cocosine River. And we just discovered, thanks to Dave and doing some research here about where his truck is located or parked, um, that it's not actually on the Cocosine River. So here in a little bit, the Mohican flows into the Cocosine. It's the end of the Mohican River. And I believe it changes to the name Wahondine River at that point. I could be wrong. But anyway, when we reach that confluence, we have to turn left and go upstream approximately a quarter mile to his truck. We did not know this when we parked our truck. What's your thoughts on this, David? Is this going to be a big deal, or do you think we're going to be able to paddle up the river? Well, the access was a muddy mess, so we don't have a choice. Either we haul it or paddle it. Yeah, so if you, didn't, if you couldn't hear that well, I know the GoPro audio is not that great. Um, we really didn't have a choice for where we parked our vehicle because it was like a quarter mile of slop and ruts and mud and I don't know if we could have made it to the Cocosine put in. So that's why we parked where we did up on the Mohican. We just didn't know it was the Mohican. So, But this is gonna be real fun paddling a quarter mile up river on the Mohican to get to our takeout vehicle. But that's all part of the adventure, right? We will get there one way or the other. Just floating along, taking a little rest right now because we're gonna have some heavy paddling coming up here in just a few moments. Going upstream on the Mohican. 
We floated right by the takeout. I didn't even see it. It's right there. Yeah, there's a red sign up there, but you can't see it from the water now. But that's where the uh, end of the Kokosi River is. And right up here is the mighty Mohican. We're getting ready to see just how mighty it is. I definitely see it moving. It's going to be slow going. Man, we might have floated right by it if we weren't paying attention. I can't believe there's not any kind of signage. There's a trail, so it still gets used. There we go, into the Mohican. Oh, it's not that far. I see the bridge up ahead, about 300 yards. Yeah, this is pretty calm. Stay along the bank and it shouldn't be bad at all. Now this is some work. But we're getting there slowly but surely. Oh man. All right, we just made it to the end. Whew, man, that was some rough paddling. I'm glad it was only uh, like three tenths of a mile. That was that was tough. But we have arrived back, sitting in this little uh, nook here, waiting for David to go grab his truck. It's just like 50 yards up the trail. But this is where we're gonna be pulling out. We gotta drag our boats up that steep 10 foot bank. Not gonna be the easiest thing, but not the hardest. Alrighty folks, that's going to conclude our Cocosing River Through Paddle. It was a great, quick overnight trip. And if you have any questions or comments about the Cocosing, just drop them down below in the comment section. I will get back with you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks so much for coming along. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you again real soon on the next kayaking adventure.